Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Fry Dates with the Wife. In these episodes, my wife and I offer an entrepreneurial couple's perspective on living a more fulfilling and meaningful life. We share our little humble opinions and hopefully make you laugh as we navigate the ups and downs of being entrepreneurs and parents. And speaking of fulfillment, if you want to hire me as your coach, head over to robshowcoach.com, fill out an application, and we'll jump on the call to see if we are a good fit to help you create and design your dream life and business. That's robshowcoach.com. Before we get into today's Friday episode, our next Work Hard, Play Hard Mastermind event will be in Dubai and Abu Dhabi for the F1 race on November 16th to the 19th. These trips are designed to get you out of your day-to-day around some amazing entrepreneurs and provide bucket list experiences that will have you coming home re-energized to grow your business and bring your life to a whole new level. Head over to workhardplayhardexperience.com and fill out an application. Okay, let's jump into today's episode. Kimberly Negroni Spagliato Murgatroyd, how are you this morning? Well, it's interesting you chose that name for me because I actually don't drink that. And if you want to know what it is, I did learn though. It's a Negroni that instead of gin uses Prosecco, which you would think I would be more inclined to drink, but I don't like the bitterness of a Negroni. So it is not in fact my middle name. It is, however, yours. And why do they call it Negroni Spagliato? Because it was a mistake. Spagliato is a mistake. And I said that wrong, I'm sure. So don't correct me. Uh, leave that to Duolingo. And it was that word means mistake. And somebody obviously made a mistake and put Prosecco instead of gin. And uh, it stuck. Well, but... The but ne- why are we here? The Negroni is not the reason we're here today. The reason we're here today is to talk about a couple of topics that I found very interesting. So I have a, um, a guest that is a referral from Shalene Johnson, who we uh, had some uh, the pleasure of spending some time with her, her and her husband here in Greece. And they said, do you know who Richie Norton is? And I'm like, no, who's Richie Norton? And she said he wrote a book called Anti-Time Management. And I think you guys are going to be besties. By the way, I'm pretty sure that's called my life. I am the, the most untime management person in the history of, of people. Well, so... I listened, she did an interview with him and I I have not interviewed him yet, nor have I done any research on him. So that will come at a later date. Um, But for right now, the interview that I listened with him and Shalene, there were, there were many takeaways, but there are two things that I wanted to bring to the podcast this morning to discuss. And the first one is on the idea of your calendar. Mm -hmm. And he said, When I see a full calendar, not always, but often, it results in an empty life. And I was like, hold on, let me rewind that. Let me listen to that again. And then their conversation around it was really fascinating. So the big takeaway that I got from that conversation is when you have a calendar if you wake up at, you know, 6 a.m., you know, 5 a.m., whatever it is, and you, you plug in one hour of, you know, your morning routine, and then six o'clock, you take a shower, and at seven o'clock, you, you know, you do your, your, your workout, and eight o'clock, you, you got your first Zoom, right? And you try and be as efficient as you possibly could with the eight to 10 hours that you've been given, you know, during the day for your work day. And so you pack it in, right? That, Those things that you're packing in your life very often are work and they are not life. So in crafting a calendar, your calendar will tell you how full your life is 
based upon what you have on it. And I thought, wow, God, that is such a true thing. When I try and become efficient by getting as many things as I can done, at the end of the day, I feel like, was I happy? I mean, I got... No, this is the part where I tell you you're walking around twitching (laughs) because you literally will do eight, nine, 10, 11, and you don't even leave time to pee, which then leaves you late for everything you're doing, which stresses you out, which makes you overwhelmed, and does not make you, it might make you efficient, but it doesn't make you effective. Now, in this podcast, so I don't mind, I, I don't mind uh, spilling the beans here because Shalene did it publicly in her podcast as a, as a teaching moment. Um, Shalene, if you don't know who she is, um, has created something called the Push Planner. And the Push Planner, we don't have to go into what the word push means because it takes a little bit of a conversation, but the Push Planner is really a, time management tool, you know, in some ways you can call it a planner, but it basically has, you know, your goals on the left side and your schedule on the right side. But it's one that you've literally been using since it was a digital download. It's an incredibly effective, it's an incredibly effective tool. So I strongly recommend you use it and, you know, hats off to her for willing to be open to the, to evolving it, to make it even better when she learns new information. And that's what I think one of the many things that makes her incredible. But what she said was, you know, people will ask me to take a photo of what, you know, as an example, what does my calendar look like? Her push planner. Her push planner. What does it look like? So they can use it as an example or a model to create their own. So they have a a more in-depth understanding. And she says, you know, recently, whenever anybody asks me to take a picture, I find myself adding more shit onto it to make me look busier because it's kind of empty. Like there's like one thing on it. And she said like, you know, she said to Richie during this interview, she said like for today, I scheduled the interview. I'm going to interview you. And then I booked another hour or I scheduled a block of another hour of nothing after this interview because I wanted to have time to think about the interview, to maybe look some things up that you said, to maybe think about what I want the intro to sound like. And when you look at it, you think, oh God, you know, this, this woman did nothing today. Like, how am I taking advice from somebody who's got nothing on her schedule? And it becomes this like weird thing. But the truth is that if you want to have a deep thinking uh, if you want to be thoughtful in how you are doing an episode, you need to leave time after the episode to process it so that you can, in this example, so that you can create an intro that is a high quality intro. That's a well thought out intro. Now, what I would have done, because I'm a podcaster, I'm using that as an example. What I would have done was I would have said, okay, I'm going to end that podcast at five minutes to on the dot. And then I'm going to write four buzzwords for the intro. And then when I, you know, when my editor yells at me and says, I need an intro to this, I'll look back on those four buzzwords and I'll just come up and go, what was their name again? What did we talk about? Which one would have been like, this is a difference too, I think, between quality and quantity, right? And what I really appreciate about Shalene and Brett is that they are not just grinding for the sake of grinding and building and grinding and building. Their goal is a fulfilling life. And for us, that's our goal, right? We're in alignment there. And so if you can take this guy, what's his name? Mr. Norton. By the way, Mr. Norton was my fifth grade teacher, one of the most impactful teachers in my life. So it's really funny. I want to call him Mr. Norton. So uh, Richie Norton is, oh my God, his name was Richard Norton. That's really crazy. Did he write a book? No. (laughs) But I think that taking this advice for you specifically would change your life because you are so good at scheduling yourself and staying in your schedule and checking every single box before you go to bed that if you just allowed, as our friend Lori said, time for some magic, If you blocked in an hour for magic, it would create a higher quality product, right? It would leave you more fulfilled and less stressed. 
And my favorite, it would probably make you on time because I hate late. So I think that this advice is incredible if you can implement it into your life. Well, but you have to push back against it, right? And you have to go like, well, why am I not doing that? And the answer to why I'm not doing that or haven't been doing that... Because we're addicted to busy. Because We like to be busy. Busy is a badge of honor. If there was a damn badge that someone could get and walk around, like what was that Jennifer Aniston movie where she had all of the flair, all of the pins of flair? Like if, if people could get a badge that said, I'm so busy it would be the most coveted badge in the world. Yeah, so if you push back against that and go, well, why why do you have the need to be so busy? And at at some point, there's probably two parts to this. Because there's nothing else in your life. Maybe. Well, that's what he said, right? If you you have a full calendar, then... Well, so... Why are you why are you doing that? So the the first part I think of why you're doing it is there's some validation that's associated with being busy. So when you think about it, you know, whenever you talk to somebody and it's like how you doing? Oh my god, things are crazy. Really? Uh, we I am so busy right now and there's a piece of them that uses it as a as a badge of honor. Yep. And I've learned that when I see how somebody telling me how busy they are, I now reverse it the other way in my head. And I say, that sucks. Like, why Why is it so busy? The other part is, I think there's a belief that when you are trying to pack in so many things that you will accomplish so many more things. And by accomplishing all of those additional things, your life will be bet- better. But the reality for me is that what you wind up having is a crazy, crazed, stressed out life. And it isn't better. And I don't think you're as as laser focused as you are when you're present working on a few things instead of 10 things simultaneously. The other piece that he said that I thought was really powerful, which is set a goal outside of your experience instead of, instead of setting a goal that you've already done. Otherwise, it's just a task. So here's the example. If you set a goal for, I want to make $100,000 this year, and then you accomplish the goal and you say, okay, now I want to do $300,000. That's not a goal that's outside of your experience. You could argue that you have to be a different kind of person to be able to be the one that makes 300000 You have to be more creative to do that. You can argue that. But the point is that it's still a goal within the same area of business or money. Try and set a goal that's outside of what your current experience is. And I have to tell you, I have extremely successful friends. And the moment that they accomplish a goal in business, they are not looking at accomplishing a goal outside of business at all. The next thing they want to do is they want to do a bigger business goal. And they are boring to me. In fact, I tell you, this is an interesting conversation. You and I have not talked about this. Because we've been in Italy for uh, the last 10 months, I've not had business conversations. And while I have missed, the Italians don't do that. It's just not important to them. Um, While I have missed the entrepreneurial conversation in some ways because I do it's a it's a part of me so I enjoy having that part of just me just not 24 hours a day just not 24 hours a day and when I am around people that are not Italian do not think that way and their business I find myself now doing the opposite I find myself zoning out where I was zoning into those conversations and it's really It's a, you know, this book that I'm writing on nature, nurture, and neighborhood, the neighborhood you're in really does dictate how you think about things and you start butting up against it. And I am becoming less and less interested. For example, I have friends who are starting companies, who are scaling companies and who are exiting companies. But with the kind of work that you and I do, where the clientele that comes to our events are in usually one of those three categories. And while I love 
the innovation during those events. It's a container. The, inve- the event is a container. It's an incubator to be able to, you know, have an environment that facilitates that discussion. So I'm in a place where I want to do that on these events. That's what it's for. But I don't want to do it 24 hours a day. And I don't want to do it all the time. And I don't want that to be my primary source of conversation. And what I'm noticing is that with these friends, when I see them again, whether they come to uh, you know Florence to visit or something like that, I realize that my interest in having these conversations becomes less and less and less. And in some ways, I'm having less to talk to them about with because they don't want to talk about life in the way I want it. I can see that when I'm having conversations, maybe it's about politics, maybe it's about current events, maybe it's about life in general, maybe it's about, you know, food, because we talk food, about food. Because we, <laughs> I can see, I, I, I have great sense of they're acuity. Bored. They're bored. They're not interested in having these conversations. And in some ways they're basically just looking away. And um, it, it's, I'm in an interesting stage of my life where I can feel, listen, don't confuse this conversation with me being anti-business or me being anti-entrepreneurial. I'm not. It's a part of who I am. It is just no, not... No, you just said it. It's a part it's of just, who you it's are. It's a part. But that's, but that's, I think, the point of uh, Richie Norton in what he said there with the calendar. Because if your calendar is only filled with business and you work... Okay, so the American Work Week, right, is Monday through Friday from 9 to 5. So that's 40 hours of your week. There's way more than 40 hours in the week. What else are you doing? You are, a lot of people are working that week plus an extra 10 to 20 hours, right? And then they're just tapping out and zoning out and going into nothing because there are no other parts to their life or there are limited parts to their life. And where fulfillment happens is when all areas of life are being worked on your health, your relationships, your your spirituality, not just your business, right? It's like business is one component and it's a very important component because Rob and I fully believe in multiple streams of income. We fully believe in having a great solid income so we can live the life that we want. But we didn't just arbitrarily throw out a random ass number like I need to have X number of millions. We we reverse engineered it and said, this is what we want our life to look like, our savings, our, all of the things. How much money do we need to accomplish that? And then reverse engineered the goal. And that's it. And full stop. And when we have a new inclination, a new dream, a new addition, we'll readjust and we'll and we'll figure it out. But we're not just chasing uh, business success because we're chasing business. Like I can't tell you the number of people I know that are like, I want to write a book, so I'm just going to write it and check mark. Hit, I checked the box. Well, why do you want to write the book? What is it doing for you? What do you have to share? Like Rob's not writing a book because it's on some some bucket list of life somewhere because he just feels compelled to write a book. He has something he wants to say and he wants to make an impact in a way. It's actually not even a goal for me to write a book. Yeah. Like I've never had that goal to write a book. I feel like I have something I want to say. That's why I'm writing it. But but there are many, when I talk to people... It's, I mean, it's just a, it's all, just part of their it, to-do like, list. Yeah, six out of 10 people, when I ask them what their goals are, at some point when I have yeah. these conversations, it's it's to write a New York Times bestseller. What are you going to write it on? No idea. Yeah. Like it's that kind of thing. And that doesn't create fulfillment, right? Uh, we were talking the other day, Rob, about the blue zones and mm. how they have nine areas of life and that impact longevity. So these are the these are the five places in the world that are living over a hundred years old. And what are they doing? I said, did you notice that income and bank account was not one of them? It's community, it's food, it's it's movement, it's spirituality, it's basically everything except money. Like money wasn't even on the radar of people living long. So what do you want? Do you want a life uh, that's 60 years and you're broken down, stressed, and probably you're going to drop dead of a heart attack because you're not taking care of yourself. You're overworked, overwhelmed, and you leave without much fulfillment? Or do you want a great long life that is 
fulfilling in every way, right? In all the areas of life. And I'm not saying those two things, you can't have money and fulfillment. You absolutely can. And that's, I think, where you're really impactful, Rob, is that you're finding the sweet sweet spot between success and fulfillment. That's what your entire um, brand is about. It's finding that sweet spot between the two and pushing in all areas of life to some degree, including business, obviously, but in all the others too. And not waiting until you sell that company, until you hit that number to then start worrying about those other areas. Yeah, for, for sure. So one of the things that um, we're going to be doing, you'll hear more about this soon, is we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be creating some additional content uh, in a private community with Patreon. And uh, one of the things, is it Patreon or Patreon? I don't know. I think it's Patreon. <clears throat> Patreon, that's what it is. Um, and I want to talk about um, in those additional episodes, I want to talk about our thoughts on the blue zones and how it relates to the way that we're living uh, today. So we'll tell you we'll, we'll tell you more about that in the uh, in the upcoming weeks. Um, anything else you have to say today? I don't want this episode to go in one ear and out the other and go, yeah, well, y- y- it's easy to say on the other side of figuring out your dream. Like I, I don't want it to go in one ear and out the other like that. I want to really make it clear that living full throttle in just one area, whether it's, you know, it doesn't matter what the area is, is is not healthy and it doesn't create fulfillment. You have to be able to balance and to going back to what Richie Norton said, look at your schedule and put in all the other areas, put in the blocks for health, put in the blocks for family time? What does your spirituality look like? What does your family time look like? What does your... What what are you passionate about outside of your business? Well, listen, you know? I mean, yes, that's right. And, and let, let me say this just to, uh, just to uncover this a little bit deeper. So I just mentioned Blue Zones and, uh, and Patreon. The reason why... I, I don't think I gave a complete thought there. The reason why I want to do this is some of this information that I want to share there, I don't think is for public consumption, my thoughts on this, at the level that we are right now. In other words, there's there's a lot of shit happening in the United States. There's a lot of unhappiness. There's a lot of crime. There's a lot of pain. Oh, you want you don't you want to be uncensored so you're not canceled? <laughs> yeah, I want to be uncensored so I'm not canceled. And when I think about the things that people the ways that people are living in the blue zones around community and food and um uh and walking and basic simple things that are making them live over a hundred years old, full Happily. deep lives. And I'm looking at you know, these bloated mansions and cars in, you know, North America and, you know, many of the industrialized nations where we're getting sicker, fatter, unhappier, more violence. I I have a lot to say about that. And I don't want to I don't want to use this platform to do it. So we're going to be doing, we're going to, we're be, going to be doing it privately. We're going to be doing it privately for people that, that, that want, want it. it. So you're going to, yeah. you'll hear, you'll hear more about I don't want to say our real thoughts, but I'll say our uncensored uncensored thoughts. Unfiltered. Okay, that's it, everybody. Have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. All right, thanks for listening. If you love this episode and you know someone that needs some help in either stepping up their work hard game or their play hard game, it would mean the world to me if you shared this podcast with them to help me get this movement out there. So if you like what you heard, head on over to iTunes, take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and I will be forever grateful. So until the next episode, excuses are over. It's time to live.